Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I am uh, <clears throat> going to get, go ahead and review some more electronics with you. Make sure as um, we're we're going to be doing this electronics for a little bit, but then we are going to be building a finish up the year making things, and we're going to make uh, uh, gliders because um, you have most of the stuff at home for it. I sh you should have by now have the foam parts for your airplane for your glider. You're going to need a hot glue gun. You're going to need some clear tape. Probably going to need, you can use a ruler or a straight edge to do some cutting in there. As well as skewers, wooden skewers, and some rubber bands, big rubber bands. So kind of be looking around the house for some, particularly for like wooden skewers, uh, small like you do with a shish kebab with a wood, or something that would work like a wooden skewer. You'll see it in the future. All right. So let's go on to the next part. We've talked about a crude description of electricity in a circuit is you think about water as the current. That's easy to remember because sometimes we call it current and water, think of a river. And then this pressure that we get pushing down, which is measured as voltage going in there, and resistance resists that. Okay? So those are the three things current, voltage, and resistance we're going to talk about. And when you have current, times voltage you get power the actual work that can be done so you can push you get more water the water would come out could do more work all right now we all tried that with the battery in the lamp you did for the most part and hopefully it's going to get working i have no idea why this will not i'm just going to exit out and i'm going to go on to the next file hopefully All right, all right, let's try this again. Let's see if I pull it up here if we can get it. So I'm going to crank this out. I'm going to some screenshots there. So we made this, then we changed the batteries, and we resulted, and we saw what it did to lamp, which in this case was really nothing. And then we pulled some current. Um, some people were finding it was better not to use the left, but to press the switch over to the right side on the current measure meter. Um, so I would sit there and say, if I updated this right now, I would say right or one amp meter, one amp. Okay, then record your results. Then we did it. Um, we put this motor in there, did the same basic thing again. We flipped it. When we ran it, it probably it may have gone clockwise or counterclockwise. When we changed the direction of that current, it went the opposite direction. So up here in the lamp, I didn't say anything, but if you change the current, it didn't change the lamp at all. It could go changing the current, the direction of the current didn't change anything. That's the negative and positive for identifying for you. But if we do this, the motor spins. So one thing we learn is if you're in an electric golf cart, one of the ways you make it go backwards, you just switch in the current. All right. And then that's what we realize there. You can add a meter. Let me go ahead and update this. Or use this next. Record your value. There you're set to go. You would start to see significant draws, and I'm not really so much worried which one. And if you spin it, you would see it would have a different value, whether or not as you turned it on. If you put more of a, um, you made that motor do more work, you would see the current draw more and more. So the battery sets your voltage. The current is de de is dependent on how much you want of something. How much draw does it do? How much does the device you're trying to power ask for the current? And then it tries to supply that. All right, let's go back over here. All right, then we went and built the LED. We've got resistance here, We've got battery switch. When we switched that one, what happened? You found out, honestly, it wouldn't run. LEDs are very sensitive to polar. So let's think about it. lamp, doesn't matter. Motor changes the direction the motor spins. And third, LED works or does. It's light emitted diode. And we use light emitted diodes or diodes just to prevent you, when you plug something in, if you plug it in wrong, it doesn't fry because they've attached a diode to it. 
so it won't allow that current to come in the wrong way. All right, we put this on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this right as well, though, honestly. And what we found there is, I hope, and most people did, but one person did, and I just probably there was a connection wrong. You're going to use a lot less current on this LED than a lamp or a motor. There's a reason why in the United States we've all switched to LEDs. I'm willing to bet your children and certainly your grandchildren will not even know what a lamp is. It'll be a special device. Everything will be almost all LEDs by then. Because if we go and eat, you know, part of the deal is I can't send home everybody a multimeter like I would have liked. But if you had a multimeter, we could take an actual measurements and you could see that, for example, uh, the lamp, the, mold, the LED uses 8%. So it's less than one-tenth of the energy a lamp does. All right, so which draws more current, the lamp or the LED? An LED does uses less current that requires most less energy, so less electricity generation. So that's why I want you to go to LEDs. All right, and it'll save you money. Now, if you started adding resistors here, what you found out is, and you changed each out each resistor in this mode, you found out that. Um, the the resistor got the LED got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. All right. So let's do another thing. So we did resistance. As the I increase resistance, what does the LED do? If the current stays the same in all cases, then what does increasing the resistance do to the voltage? Well, by increasing the resistance, it reduces the voltage, and we know this because the LED just got dimmer. All right. Now. Please rebuild this. Observe how fast it spins. So that the rest we just did was review. Right now, I want you to go back and I want you to rebuild this. Okay, I'm going to count to three and pause once you have it. I want you to spin it. I want you to spin it. Let it spin. Notice the direction. And then I want you to build this one. Two double battery packs. With a positive one battery pack, so the negative this. Here, here, another switch. I want you to see how much more it turns. Okay, I'm going to go to count to three and then pause. All right, now the batteries are connected again, positive, negative. How would you mathematically describe the voltage? What did the voltage do on yours? And how would we describe it? Well, we would describe it this way. I'm just give you this. Voltage in series, we call them in series when it's nose to tail, so positive to negative. If it's positive to positive, we're going to talk about being in parallel when we hook these batteries up or you hook things up. Here we're hook, hooking them up in series. V total equals V1 plus V2. So this voltage and this voltage, these are each three volts. Each battery is one and a half volts, three. Now something you should understand about voltage on a battery. If the battery's 1.5 volts, and you have 1.4 volts, it's of no use. It has to have the minimum 1.5 or higher because that voltage is, remember, is a push. And if it doesn't have at least 1.5 volts, it can't push the current. All right? So saving batteries that have 1.2 volts are just, there's no reason to go recycle them. Um, the batteries are connected positive. Now, in this case, I want you to connect, notice, Positive in this side, positive. So this whole arm's positive. Notice this is negative. All of us notice there's not a switch here. So the minute you snap, start snapping these things on, you're going to see that it'll, it'll run. Now, what I want you to see is how fast does it spin, though, compared to when you had in series. This would be described as being in parallel because the positive and the positive are on the same side. The negative and negative are on that side. So put it together. And see what you get. How would we describe voltage in parallel? Here's the wild thing. You really, they just all equal. So voltage equals V total equals V1 or V2. Since these all have, they don't add up. They're all the same. They end up being the same amount of voltage when it's in parallel. Hopefully, the fan, your results show the same thing. Mine would show that as you 
put them in parallel, the battery, the fan doesn't really spin any faster. Um, also, I would say, so why in the world would you put batteries in parallel, not in series? Because what you're losing in um, fan going faster, the fan can spin longer. So we put things in parallel, we go faster. Also, if you lose one battery, you still can run the whole system on one set of batteries. All right. So Christmas trees, for example, are almost always in uh, in these days parallel. They used to be, it used to be cheaper to do them in series, but if you lost one light bulb, you, the whole system stops. So you had to switch out all the light bulbs. All right. Now let's go into series more parallel circuits. Let's look at that in terms of resistors. So I want to use resistor 1 and resistor 2 and build the circuit. Okay, you built that circuit. All right, I want you to think in terms of, do you think those are in parallel or in series? I hope you told me in series. Good. Because it's tail to tail on this. Also look at the LED. If you do one, if you want, build, I'll tell you what, just to be on the safe side, let's back that up. Compare that to this one right here. One resistor LED switch, make sure you build that, and then compare it, if you would, to this. So I need to make a slide and put it over there. Slides are always evolving, changing, reuse them. that put that down so bear with me okay uh, let me see here Please rebuild this. Build this circuit. Then, the next screen, we're going to make this circuit. Notice this used an R1. I want you to use an R1 and R2. So take a moment, build it, compare them. Are the resistors in series or parallel? I want you to think about that. In this case, they're in series. They're lined up one after each other. What is the resistance of the circuit? Well, believe it or not, it adds up. So if you have um, R1 and R2, I believe is a... Let me take a quick look. I'll pull those off my notes here. All right. Let's see here. R1 is 100 and a horseshoe, if you look at the R1. That's 100 ohms, and then 1K, and they're missing the horseshoe, but it'd be 1,000. So this is 1,100 ohms. So the resistance, LED goes down. All right. Resistors in series add up. So R total equals R1 plus R2. Now, a little bit something a little bit stranger. Build this circuit right here. All right. Also, remember, LEDs are very sensitive to polarity. If you don't build it exactly the way we show it, you know, you got the polarity wrong, it won't work on an LED. All right. So with that in mind, um, build this, you build it. What happens to your LED? First of all, are they in series or parallel? In this case, the resistors, each resistor, are on the positive side, and one's on each on the share of the same negative side. So we'd call these in parallel. Resistors are not sensitive to polarity, by the way. 
If the LED is the LED brighter or lighter that than when than when the resistors were in series. Um, I think you're going to find that it was brighter. And so resistance total actually goes down. So think of these like pipes. Yes, there's resistance going across here, but by adding more and more pipes, some of the, this was the water analogy, water's going from here to here. If you keep adding pipes, some are more blocked up than others, you're still like going to get more water into the system. So believe it or not, if you want to decrease uh, when, um, In parallel parallel all right they're in parallel right now all right then the LEDs were brighter when you found was true the LEDs were brighter when we increased voltage the LEDs brighter when we decreased resistance and those are both true all right this is Ohm's law, and it's a graphic of it, but I just want you to see current is known as amps. That's where you see I there. Voltages are often shown in E, though we can use V, and there's resistance. The one that starts with R, you would think that makes sense. You would think amps wouldn't be I, it would be C. I wasn't there at the meeting when they decided that, but that's what it is. Now, the one thing I really want to stress, because I think people get it wrong all the time, Power, they'll say voltage means power. We kind of separate like voltage or current. Oh, more power. No. If power is current, which in this case, e, all right, times voltage. So voltage, if we call it E, E times I. So voltage E times I current gives you power. I can't say that enough. Now, you can also get calculate power by taking current, squaring it, and multiplying it by resistance. And you can also square voltage and do the same thing. So I just would like you uh, make sure kind of that you see that power is related to both current and voltage. Another class, a little bit later, we'll explain exactly how we derive that, but um, next year in future engineering classes. So voltage equals I over R. So if I want to calculate voltage, if I know the current, I know the resistance, I can get it. They were also calling this E just a minute ago, but voltage equals, so voltage in a circuit is current times resistance. Resistant, uh, voltage, uh, excuse me, current is equal to voltage over resistance. Resistance equals voltage over current. By doing that, you can calculate all the currents at every one of these cells in a circuit. Uh, we're not going to do that so much right now, I do want you to see that doing this law in Kirchhoff's laws is most electronics. So it goes really well by getting to know that. Okay? All right. So today, I just want you to build these projects. Take a picture. I would like you to build, go through what I just did on Kern's Law, and then look at some circuits and things you're just interested in and make some cool ones. And I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you free will on that one. All right, and then we're going to go over something Friday, and then we will probably end up uh, a little bit more electronics, so not a lot, but that by next week, we're going to start building planes. All right, so you get to build something with your hands. Not normally what we like to do in Design 1. I'd rather have you build something totally from scratch, but the, with the use of equipment, that's where we are this year. Okay, you have a great day. And so send me a picture of a project you've built. Hopefully you followed this. You've seen where we're going with Ohm's Law. Please do that. Thank you. Bye. Oh, well.